tonight, we're going to take a look at some classic VHS trash. Then we're going to the drive-in for a sneak peek at an amazing happening for the summer of 2015. But first, let's head over to the theater and kick off this month's horror theme. June is camping month, and tonight's feature is the currently out of print, The Prey. It's intermission. Rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen for hot popcorn? Your favorite soft drinks are sparkling cold. The juicy Frank Sizzling. The Prey was released by Roger Corman's New World Pictures in 1984, and its history is as tedious as its entertainment value. Coming right at the very end of the second great slasher cycle's peak, it begins with a twist on the accepted setup scenario, the prior tragedy or prior evil scenario. They had a bunch of gypsies that lived up there in a cave. Mostly poachers, you know. Found a gypsy just burnt to a crisp. You couldn't pull them apart. Tell which was which. The Forest Service sent us back in there to replant. And it was a, a young boy. And he was burnt like nothing you've ever seen in your life. Following the typical slosher setup, after our motive is established, we meet the campers. My research indicates that the accepted official filming date of the film is 1978, but there are some sources that dispute this. Evidence that supports this dispute presents itself in the form of the film's narrative. It does not play like a film that predates Friday the 13th. However, it is agreed that the film was completed for at least two to three years before finding distribution. So the film could very well have been cut after the fact to mimic current narrative trends. This one is so obvious and by the numbers, it's hard to tell. A clue that seems to have eluded historians is the fact that our friendly forest ranger is actually the non-imbecile cousin of Bill Murray's character from Caddyshack. Just listen. Some babies, and I was wondering what you feed your babies. And the rather said, Well, I feed my babies carrots and lettuce and cabbage and parsley. This supports the idea that this film was likely a product of the 1980s. However, for now, history insists that we are in Utah circa 1978, and the wardrobes do scream late 70s. It is the same element that makes the prey both endearing and excruciating, the padded running time. There are so many rumors about different cuts of this film and where this and that footage came from, etc. But the cut in widest circulation is padded with nature inserts, and the dialogue suggests the script was a mere outline, as everything sounds ad-libbed. So the Prey is surprisingly light on graphic violence, and I would attribute this more to budgetary issues than an artistic choice. Interestingly enough, to refute the point of the moral majority, most of the on-screen violence is done to men by a man. On a side note, isn't it interesting that this is beginning to look like David Lynch's take on Don't Go in the Woods Alone? While the makeup suggests a gruesome act of violence, when it comes to the demise of men, nothing is suggested. It is fully exploited. Whether this was a direct response to prior criticism or just the unnoticed nature of this bulk of these films is not quite understood. The monster effects in The Prey are actually pretty stellar, but perhaps The Prey's greatest triumph is the twist ending. Or maybe not so much a twist ending as it is a denial of audience expectations. By 1984, audiences didn't want dark endings anymore. The Cold War was over. Now there's some evidence placing the shooting of this film in the 1970s. If 
this film had had a wider theatrical run, it may have never survived the test of time. But its lack of availability has given it credibility among fans of schlock. And that's the nature of these films. It's hard to say what is going to make these films indelible in the history books. The Prey, while being moderately remembered, is really only worth about a half slosh on the slosher scale. Collectors, if you see this VHS for below 30 bucks, snap it up. Everybody else can wait. Before you split, stick around for an awesome look at the Mahoning Drive-In, in partnership with Exhumed Films, bringing you an authentic retro drive-in experience. Killer Collection, coming at you from the Mahoning Drive-In in Pennsylvania. The Mahoning Drive-In has the largest cinemascope screen in the state I'm of Pennsylvania. I'm here with Virgil at the Mahoning Drive-In. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the history? Absolutely. Mahoning's been open since 1948. It's got technically the largest screen on the east coast and 109 foot screen um, we've been first run theater since we have never closed for a season so definitely have a long rich cinematic history get out of here people this is amazing don't miss this thank you virgil you got it brother Cheers. Do do do.